Hey, I'm Nick DiMatteo, and welcome to episode 51. And if you're listening via one of the uh, many podcast streaming services, season three of Music is Not a Genre. Each week I take a release from my collection, I discuss it, I give you my take on it, I throw in some other interesting things, and I connect it to my music, other music, and other things in the world. Uh, as always, uh, please subscribe and ding things, uh, depending what service you're on. Uh, uh, thank you for supporting me if you're on Patreon. If you're not, I recommend you check that out. You get a lot of exclusive content there, including my upcoming interview series. Uh, and thank you for sharing and clicking. If you think you know someone who is crazy about music uh, the way I am, share this stuff with them. I have a feeling they're going to like it. Um, this week's episode is special. Not just because it's the beginning of season three for my audio listeners um, and the beginning of a new phase in general. And we passed the 50 mark of these videos, but also because of what you see here. And if you are just listening, what I have here on the video uh, version is a layout of many different formats of music. Uh, just, they're, 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 I will describe it as I go uh, for your benefit if you'd like. But just imagine a table with some... Uh, vinyl on there and cassettes and some digital stuff and some CDs and a, and a shelf and all of that just kind of laid out on display. You kind of get the idea. This is a transitional episode uh, that I am calling which music format is best. The answer may surprise you because we're going to be talking about music formats. Um, yeah, history, especially for people who haven't been, uh, you know, watching or listening to me, uh, I have been blogging about music for years. And then uh, in late 2019, I decided to transition to video. And then early this year, 2021, I, I've been uh, transitioning to uh, audio only. And through all of that, I do what I say I do at the beginning, which is I, you know, uh, grab a release or several or, you know, from my collection, I talk about it, right? When I started my very first blog and the, the hundred or so after probably, I don't remember how many, were all about my cassette collection, which you see here. And when I transitioned from the cassettes to vinyl there, I um, took a pause and talked about the many, many music formats that there have been since the existence of recorded music from the 19th century, late 19th century on till today. There have now been, uh, at last count, over 50 formats of recorded music that have somehow been uh, shared with the world and, you know, in one way or another, including the ones that we're going to talk about uh, today. And instead of kind of going over all those like I did there, it'd be fun. And uh, for those of you who have access to the text, which are most of you, uh, I've uh, included a link to an information page and in all the various formats of music, which is really cool. You should check it out. Um, but instead of doing that, this time we're gonna, we're gonna do what the title says. We are going to find out what the best format is for listening to music. And yes, the answer may surprise you. So. You know, uh, let's talk about what we have here, first of all. Um, we're not going to go into every single of the 50-plus formats. We're going to stick with the, you know, four, maybe call it five, most popular formats of the last 50 or 60 years. Uh, really, 70, probably 70 or, or even 80 years. Um, and they are vinyl, cassettes, CDs, and... Um, digital, uh, a couple different uh, variations on the digital idea. So let's start, let's, let's, you know, do it chronologically. Let's go for it, right? So every format has their fans. To this day, every format has their fans. And that's one of the things I love about music, but it's also one of the things I love about technology, is that even when a technology is essentially outdated, there are going to be thousands, millions of people, you know, or more who still love it and who still use it in one way or another, or if they don't use it, they at least collect it, they, they revere it, they honor it, and things like that. And, they, and uh, they have some experience with it, right? 
Uh, but we, as we all know, in every era, there are one, possibly two formats that are dominant in that era. And so, like I said, chronologically, so let's go back to vinyl, right? Vinyl has a ton of fans to this day. Vinyl, I believe there was more vinyl sold like last year or the year before than, in the, you know, than in at any time in the last 15 years. So it kind of surged a little. But of course, it, it has, you know, or had been in decline for many, many years because of the, you know, all the other formats that were introduced. But it's the one that has been, it is in terms of popular culture and the consumer and all of that, that has been around the longest. It was the first format to be successful at disseminating music on a wide scale, right? And there are various kinds. You have the old, very hard, hard shell 78s and until the, the flexible, more flexible vinyl that we're used to, to the point where you, they could even just put like basically paint vinyl onto cardboard and create, you know, records from that. Anything that you can scratch grooves in, you know, they made, they made vinyl uh, record out of an LP, EP, 45 singles. You see some of those here. Uh, why do people love vinyl so much? Well, they're romantics, first of all, but they like the they like the nostalgia of it. They like the warm, there's a warm sound to it. There's, a, there's the crackly sound to it is, you know, uh, the majority of vinyl that you get, there's gonna be a little bit of crackle there, you know, right? They love being able to drop that needle anywhere they want on the side that they're on to choose the song that they, that they want. And then, of course, uh, old school DJs are still doing, you know, mixing, cutting and scratching. That, that's essential, you know, for that type of uh, mixing. Uh, there's plenty of other kinds. Uh, they love taking care of it, you know, the polishing you have to do and the, and the care you take with the needle and, and the slip, you know, the slip cover, the sleeve and all of that stuff. They love the art. They love how big the, the art is on the, on the cover and on any potential inserts. Some inserts ranged, you know, from postcards to full posters, folded up posters and things like that and larger booklets and stuff. Um, a, a lot of art that was in a, in a way essential, you know, a very big part of consuming the music when you're dealing with vinyl. Uh, well, cassettes, cassettes are just, they're, I call them, they're for utilitarian punks. And that's, that's like when you just want music in your hand, right? It, it has, you know, you've, you've got this plastic case with an insert that has all the information you need and some art and stuff like that. You know, it's just like an LP, it's broken up into the two sides, but, uh, you know, and you can't drop a needle, but the advantage is it's much more portable. And, you know, you could, you could uh, when they were introduced especially, you could play it in the car, you could jog with it, you could do things you couldn't do with vinyl, you know? And it has kind of a bright, kind of almost sizzly sound, I would say, because it is tape, you know? And, it, it, and what's interesting about that to me is that the majority of recorded music up until the, you know, really probably even through the 90s, let's be honest, mo or half of the 90s, um, was done through magnetic tape, through, you know, half inch reels or two inch reels or whatever. When I started my recording career, the first several sessions I did was all tape. The studios, all the studios ran on tape until digital audio workstations, DAWs came out and were, became prevalent. Uh, that's what you did, and cassettes are kind of a mini version of that. They're, it's not like having a little mini reel-to-reel -reel in your hand. So there's some kind of, and you can record on a cassette very easily. Uh, CDs, they're for the aficionados, the people who like that compact version of an LP, essentially, because it's the same shape. You could have the same art in it. In fact, CDs often had way more art, uh, way more art, and way more, because you could put little booklets in there. And they're portable. When you have them in your hand, you can be reading it along, you, can, you know, sitting on a subway or in a car and things like that. The, the depths of sound and the nuances that could be captured through this new digital format just far surpassed anything that had existed before then. There was no aural physical barrier between the original sound the recorded sound of the musicians, the singers, and the listener. In other words, well, I'll get into that a little later in, in terms of the cons, but, um, and you can choose a song in an instant. Oh, you want track three? Just dit, dit, you know, go to track three and you're done. Uh, 
Digital files are for the consumers, for people who don't have who don't have time, who want to get straight to the music. They're easy to collect. They're easy to store. There are many audio qualities to choose from. So if you you know want to fit a lot to a little space, go with thinner thinner quality or. You don't have great speakers, so it doesn't matter. If you do have great speakers and you want to go highest, highest quality, even higher than really, you know, most CDs, um, you can find a song in an instant. You think, oh, what this song is in my head. Boom, you go online, you find it, and it's there. You know, th those are some huge, huge pluses. Um, but let's get into the cons. Let's go back. Vinyl, right here. I'm showing my viewers. I've got the Art of Noise LP. I've got uh, this one, which is oh, Din Dada, 12 inch, right? Uh, a couple of other things. I've got a Talking Heads. I've got this entire awesome, cool 70s mini box of 45s that, that are just full of them, full of them, right? And uh, well, so what are some of the cons, right? Well, they warp easily, they scratch easily they're hard to store you need a lot of room to store a very little even small collection uh, of vinyl um this the the sound warps easily in fact the recording process itself what you get there is what i would call uh, just as with cassettes and the and cassettes and 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 vinyl are what are what are called the analog recording uh formats um, pre-digital, you get a kind of a barrier between the original sound and what you're listening to because of the material that, that is being used. There's, you know, the people who are proponents of vinyl with a warm crackly sound are totally cool with that, but what that really is, you know, just in an objective sense, is an additional layer of sound in between you and the original recorded sound. That tape that the tape warp that you get when tapes get older, they get a little stretch, tape stretches. It, you know, it expands and contracts. It often gets unspooled, you know, which as you know, if you've ever used it, because here's a cassette. What's this one? Uh, uh, Fishbone, right? Um, I'm not even gonna talk about what, what else you see. What is this? You see this? I'm showing people an eight track. That, that's something I'm not even discussing because it didn't last. It lasted fairly long, but not long enough to really be a part of this conversation. Uh, and it wasn't that much a part of my life. You see my entire collection of eight tracks here? Two. Um, but at any rate, there is there is that bit of a sonic barrier that again, people like the flavor. They like the character of it. They like the tape warp is something that I've used in my recording to intentionally distort a keyboard sound in songs, things like that but it's not something people necessarily want when they're listening to music, or some people do. CDs, they're also hard to store. Yeah, they're compact discs, right? But take a look at this. And this is such a small fraction of the, um, the amount of music that can be stored digitally that you understand that although they were improvements in many ways, they're still, they still take up a lot of space. I'm constantly grappling with where to put all the CDs I own, and I own several hundred which is really only half of what I used to own. I gave, I gave a lot away to you know, bookstores and stuff that would resell them. Um, their sound is often too compressed and uh, can be thinner, that, but that's not necessarily a function of the format, but of the quality of the way it was transferred onto the disc. Um, you know, and they can, they can warp, it takes a much longer time, uh, they, and they can be scratched, as we've all, anybody who's used the CD knows that CDs can skip, right? Digital, what are some of the cons? Well, they're hard to catalog, they're hard to keep track of, right? You, you can do it, but you have to make an effort to create the, the file folders and all of that stuff in a way that you don't, that, that, that's a, it's a lot less hands-on than uh, these, these analog formats here. And CDs and digital are the digital formats. And I'm gonna make one comment of that later uh, towards, towards the end here um, that kind of gives you a, an idea of what the difference is between the two uh, just scientifically. Um, and, and I think the thing for me anyway that is the, you know, the sound can be wildly variable. Let's go with that. You can have the weakest MP3 that, that takes up barely a, you know, a megabyte 
but you can also have you know a, a wave or an AIFF or, a, or you know flack that is like uh, you know almost a gig or whatever hundreds of megabytes at least um, th that again can be even greater than the CD quality sounds and but you don't always know what you're getting especially when it comes to streaming you don't quite know what sound quality you're getting uh, you you miss uh, at least for me I know I miss some of the experience of being able to hold the art in the hand and read the text read the lyrics read whatever the artist wanted to put in there um, look at the pictures and things like that you can find all that online but the point is you have to find it you have to look it up it's very rarely attached to the thing you're listening to when you're listening to it the most you usually get uh, is the front cover and then some of the songs have you know lyrics streaming along with the song and that's so that's a big difference the now I think the biggest dividing line here is, is between analog and digital and as you see here I have a, an mp3 player so when I talk digital I'm talking two things I'm talking actual files like mp3s and waves and things that you download and store and then upload into players like this or onto your computer and stuff like that or this is my, you know, uh, iPad. The streaming services that we all know and most of us have used or continue to use at least one of them, and I have my favorite, you have your favorites and all, where you're not really downloading anything, you're honestly not even collecting anything, you're just listening. You, you know, you have your, your library, which is these are the things you've liked or earmarked and stuff like that, but you don't, you're not, it's not taking physical ownership of something the way it is with the other things. And, you know, sonically, I'm not great at describing this, but I will give it a shot. Analog is what you call real world sound, which is when we use our ears, when you're, you know, you, if you were in the room listening to me right now, you'd be getting analog sound, which means you're getting the highs and the lows and everything in between. All the cracks. There are no cracks. It is one continuous wave of sound as far as as much as the you know, human ear can can absorb right with digital the, it's all made up of ones and zeros the way all digital is and the difference between uh what you call a lossy file which is cheap cheapo mp3s or a lossless file which literally means less loss you're losing you're losing little or none of the sonic quality of the original and that's why the file is so large is you, you know, you, there's a variability between uh, how many ones and zeros you're using, essentially. What's your storage capacity for one song? And so even, even with the greatest storage capacity, the highest quality audio file, it's, like, it's kind of like thinking of dividing something in half and in half again and half again and half again. When do you get to zero? Never. It's an infinite number of halves, no matter how small you get. So there are always going to be teeny little spaces in between those ones and zeros, those halves, let's say, that you don't that don't get picked up on on uh, digital recordings. Now, my contention is, we're at a point now where the human ear can't detect that. And you may, you know, let's say I'll say this: the human soul maybe can detect it. There might be some quality that we haven't, you know. Uh, discerned yet that is able to detect those spaces in between the, the ones and zeros in the same way you know the eyes can only see a certain uh, amount of the light spectrum but maybe there are things we're seeing you know uh, infrared that's like infrasonic and things like that um, but in the real world you the, the that's so it's so negligible that even just from the science of ears, we can't we can't really listen closely enough to hear the cracks in the highest quality audio files. Which is why I like streaming services that had that try to shoot for the higher quality files. I tend to upload things in waves instead of MP3s, although both are excuse me totally fine. So anyway, what is the best format? I mean, we came here to answer that question, right? You see this beautiful spread here and, and uh, this, you know, MP3 player, which is for some reason the thing I'm most fascinated with right now. Um, when I was young, vinyl was the only thing really for a while and there were cassettes and, and they were more for home recording. But when cassettes blew up, I, you know, I completely flipped because I could take them anywhere. I was just starting to, you know, I could take them in the car when mom and dad were driving or when I started driving. I could put a you know, Walkman and go anywhere with them. 
And that just drove me crazy. I was like, this is amazing. And it's, when CDs came, uh, I didn't switch to them right away. It actually took me several years to start buying CDs on a regular basis. And it was because A, players were expensive, and B, more importantly, most cars did not have CD players. So what was I going to do with that? And, and you know, disc, disc men, you know, portable CD players were expensive too. So it took several years for me to transition to that. But when I did, I never bought another cassette. Unless, unless it was a local band that that's all they sold. Because people still manufacture cassettes even through the 90s. Um, when streaming and digital came and MP3s and like Napster and, and LimeWire and FrostWire and all that stuff, you know, legal and not, I, I jumped into that and just collected a bunch of stuff, but didn't transition away from buying CDs of albums and things that I wanted for a long, long time, for a long time, probably into the, uh, I would say into the teens in the 20 teens. Um, so it took, I think I held on to the CD format for a good 20 to 25 years before I made the switch. And what, what caused me to make the switch was streaming services. Um, it was hard because I do miss actually owning and being able to share and show music to people. I, I miss, like I said, owning the art, being able to hold the art in my hands and stuff like that. But the ability to dial up any song you want at any time and, and to create a playlist of anything, anywhere, anytime, you know, all of that stuff finally won me over to the point where sometime in the early teens, I just stopped buying CDs altogether. And I think a lot of other people are in the same boat there. Um, I, I, I do miss, I miss certain things about vinyl and really miss certain things about cassettes. They were a huge part of my life for so many reasons. CDs probably knocked up the biggest chunk of my life so far, and, and so I certainly missed them. And it was honestly hard to give away some of the ones I did. Um, uh, but di but digital's ruling the day for me right now. Streaming is streaming, is ruling the day. If you ever go onto my Spotify profile, you will see so many playlists uh, of, uh, you know, a bunch of different styles and things, but also of my music, you know, and things like that, which you, you know, conveniently see here with the CDs. There's some of the albums, my band Wreck, Distance to Empty, The Sunshine Seminar, and the whole weird objective right there. What you don't know is that these CD cases are actually empty because these, these albums from past parts and labor, which was a while ago, over a decade ago, I haven't manufactured CDs of my stuff. Or anything like that. But any, anyway, that's a that's something. And it, it, none of that is enough for me to go back to consuming music in the old way. So let's get to the answer, right? And I'm calling this answer, I'm titling the answer. And the title of this answer is, Music is not a format. Music is not a genre. Music is not a format. And what I mean by that is, in all of this, the most important thing is the music itself, the experience of, of listening to and absorbing and, 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 and processing and sharing the music, understanding the music and the lyrics and the things that the artist wanted to share with you. There's nothing more important than that. How you get that music, entirely up to you. Whatever to me, it's whatever is the quickest and, and best quality and most effective way to, for me to listen to music that I want to listen to, that's what I'm going for. I miss, I miss browsing in stores, like hugely. I went to one in Manhattan a couple months ago, sparsely attended, everybody masked, but it was amazing just to be in there and just to see other people browsing for music. You know, it's something I really miss, and finding things you wouldn't stumble across. You don't tend to stumble across things online. So you do sometimes if you're really, really looking. Um, you know, suggestions or non-suggestions or however you want to deal with that algorithm crap. Uh, but the point of all of it is, I don't care. And I don't care what your answer is. And I, and people are welcome to debate the pros and cons of all this until they're blue in the face. And I don't care about that either. All, all I care about is the music. All I care about is a way to get the music, whether it's as a listener or as a creator to share the music, to connect to the music and to connect to other people, to other people through the music. 
So yeah, you know, music is not a format. Um, uh, for those of you with access to the text, which again is most of you, if not all of you, I, I included another link there at the bottom, which is to this here, right here, this here, the magnum opus, I'm calling it, because why not have fun, the weird objective, five albums of rec music, 32 tracks. Um, that's my way of sharing music that I've created and that I love and that I want, want other people to, to hear. Um, but I want to know what you listen to. I want to know what you think. I want to know what you like. What's your history with music format, formats? How far back does it go? Do you go all the way back to vinyl? Or are you younger and vinyl is like this cool, kitschy retro thing? I, I don't know. What, do you have a favorite format to this day? Do you have a favorite format, nostalgically speaking, that you don't use, but it's kind of always your personal favorite? I want to know all of this. I want to discuss it with you. Leave it in the comments. Contact me in whatever way you can, because as always, my objectives here are music, conversation, and connection. Thank you for listening and watching and reading and clicking and sharing and subscribing and supporting. Uh, next week, we are going to kick it off with one of these CDs here or a band's worth of CDs. I don't know yet, so stay tuned, and I'll see you then.